now wish to introduce U.S. Philippine Society Co-Chair and Ayala Corporation Chairman, Jaime Augusto Zobel de Ayala. First of all, good evening, President Marcos. So nice to have you here, sir. And together with my U.S. Philippine Society co-chair, Ambassador Negro Ponte, and our society members, we congratulate you on the successful trilateral leaders meeting with President Biden and Prime Minister uh, uh, Kishida. Congratulations, Mr. President. Uh, the meeting is proof of the strong relationship between our three countries and the shared commitment towards a free and open Indo-Pacific region. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank you for your presence here tonight, Commerce Secretary Gina Raimundo and Secretary of the Navy, Carlos del Toro, Deputy Secretary of State, Kurt Campbell, members of the Diplomatic Corps, the Philippine and U.S. Secretaries, Senators and members of Congress of both the Philippines and the United States, colleagues, friends from the business community, and organizations represented here tonight, a pleasant evening to all. On behalf of the U.S. Philippine Society and together with Ambassador uh, Robaldes and the Philippine Embassy, uh, we're delighted to host this business reception in honor of President Marcos after a historic meeting at the White House yesterday. Thank you to all of you for making time to be here tonight and for your tremendous support and continued engagement with the U.S. Philippine Society. It is certainly a pleasure to be with you all here at this remarkable gathering of advocates of a strengthened bilateral ties between the United States and the Philippines. Over the past two years, engagement between our two countries has increased exponentially. Just two weeks ago, Secretary Blinken made his second visit to Manila, right after we at Ayala had the pleasure of hosting Commerce Secretary Raimondo as he successfully led the presidential trade and investment mission. These engagements are a testament to the enduring partnership that we have built over generations based on shared democratic values and a special relationship between our two nations. We're also looking forward to the upcoming hosting of the sixth Indo-Pacific Business Forum in Manila. We see this as an excellent opportunity for both government and private sector leaders to share insights and explore opportunities and solutions to support infrastructure in the region's emerging economies. There is also an increasing engagement with the Indo-Pacific Partnership for Prosperity and exploring how this can be a platform for equitable progress. I'm honored to be part of this noteworthy initiative. To our friends from the United States, the Filipino members of the U.S. Philippine Society are your trusted partners in seeking and cementing opportunities in the Philippines. We work in tandem with the American Chamber of Commerce, the U.S. Embassy in Manila, and our Philippines Embassy here in Washington, D.C. We're happy, of course, to provide you with complete assistance should you have any interest in exploring opportunities in the Philippines. As Society Co-Chair, I'm committed, along with my fellow members, to support the aspirations of the U.S. Philippine Society and the broader relationship between our two countries whether in the economic sphere or in further strengthening the already solid people-to-people -people ties between the United States and the Philippines. Thank you, and I look forward to a great evening with you all. Mabuhay. To give his remarks, U.S. Philippine Society Co-Chair Ambassador John Negroponte. Jaime Agusto, and welcome as uh, the new Philippine co-chair of the U.S. Philippine Society. You have big shoes to fill. We, we really appreciated the work of Manny Pangilinan for more than a decade, but we're delighted that you have uh, decided to uh, take on uh, those responsibilities, and I very much look forward to working with you. Mr. President, uh, welcome. Uh, Secretary Raimundo, uh, Secretary Del Toro. Uh, first, let me acknowledge the principal sponsors of this uh, presidential dinner, the s and Electric Company, 
the Ayala Corporation, with important additional support from I Squared Capital. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to join U.S. Philippine Society Co-Chair Jaime Zobel in welcoming you all this evening as we honor President Marcos and mark a critically important time in the relationship between our two countries. Mr. President, we appreciate your support for the Society's work and value our partnership with your administration, including with your embassy here in Washington so capably led by Ambassador Romualdez. Uh, Co-Chair Jaime, let me thank you and your team once again on behalf of the Society's directors and members for your leadership and for demonstrating that the Society's success as a premier organization linking the United States and the Philippines lies in its bi-national character, composition, and commitment. Emblematic of those strong and enduring ties is the presence tonight of former uh, ambassadors to the Philippines, U.S. ambassadors, with whom I am honored to be associated. Frank Wisner, Tom Hubbard, Christy Kenny, and Sung Kim. Let's give them a, a, a round of applause for, for their, uh, and yes, I mentioned Tom. I was looking at you and I was wanting to be sure I'd mentioned you. <laughs> their continuing interest in and support for the relationship speaks volumes about the lasting impressions the Philippines and its people has made on these Americans and so many others here with us. And uh, there's no other way to do this, so I'm going to do it now. It's a little bit of an administrative statement, but uh, we'd like to have a collective photo with all the former ambassadors uh, after, uh, after the dinner. Uh, Ambassador Carlson made that very helpful suggestion, and so look, if you can all <laughs> gather around here when, when we break up, I'd be most appreciative. Of course, these former diplomats would be the first to recognize that the breadth of strategic, economic, and people-to-people -people ties has never been wider and more consequential than today. And we are indeed fortunate to have Ambassador Mary Kay Carlson at the helm with the gears of the relationship, to use her words, uh, in hyperdrive. Mr. President, we salute your strategic vision of a secure, free, and peaceful Indo-Pacific. Cap this week, what? with a historic trilateral commitment to that vision. At the same time, we recognize the impressive strides made by the Philippine economy under your leadership after emerging from the pandemic and facing other severe global challenges. I have heard you say that, the economic, secur that economic security is national security, reflecting the importance you attach to promoting trade and investment ties. Well, I'm happy to introduce the Secretary, United States Secretary of Commerce, Gina Raimondo, who I am confident shares that view. Secretary Raimondo took the lead in organizing the Presidential Trade and Investment Mission to the Philippines in March and is widely recognized as playing a central role within the administration here in supporting stronger and mutually beneficial commercial and investment ties with the Philippines. Madam Secretary, congratulations on your successful mission last month. We are delighted that you've been able to join us tonight to meet with government and private sector leaders from both countries and sustain the momentum generated from your leadership on U.S.-Philippine trade and investment. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Secretary Gina Raimondo. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you. It's so wonderful to be here, I have to say. Uh, I, of course, it's an honor to be with you, President Marcos. Thank you for uh, all that you're doing and your leadership and really leaning into the U.S.-Philippines relationship. I will say, uh, President Marcos was unbelievably gracious and generous uh, to me and to our team when we were there 
last month, and I want to personally thank you for that. I think I can speak for all of us on the mission that we were blown away with your engagement and thoughtfulness, uh, graciousness, and just ability to listen and engage with us to deepen our relationship. It's a credit to you as a person and to your leadership, so thank you. Uh, and of course, to the co-chairs, Ambassador Negroponte and my friend Jaime, uh, thank you both for all of the work that uh, you have done and that you are doing and will continue to do. And to everyone's here, my secretary and my colleagues in government, thank you for being here. We did have, uh, as you said, an, um, a fantastic mission uh, presidential mission to the Philippines. It was actually the first presidential U.S. presidential mission to the Philippines. So it was quite a historic uh, mission that we had, that I had the honor of leading. And we brought with us 22 U.S. companies and organizations. Uh, their work spanned everything from technology to clean energy, renewable energy, digital, information technology, logistics, and transportation. I see a few of you here this evening. It was, a, it was quite the group that we brought. We announced more than a billion dollars of investment. And to a person, everyone on the visit with me said they want to do more in the Philippines. To a person. And, you know, once again, it's no exaggeration to say that the mission was so successful because of the deep and active involvement of President Marcos and his team. Your team was incredible, giving us the access that we needed and uh, enabling us to not just have a great lunch and great meal, but excellent working sessions that I know will bear fruit. In fact, uh, it's only been a month since we met in Manila, but we're already, so you don't have to take my word for it, the facts prove out my excitement. One week after uh, we left Manila, UPS, big American company, announced a deal, a huge deal, with the Luzon Airport Development Corporation to significantly expand its already sizable operations in Clark Airport. That's the first of what I predict will be a steady stream of announcements coming out of that visit. Uh, and I think that I have all, I've teased the participants that UPS went first, so who's next? Um, but I do, I do expect that it, there will be a steady stream. I also want to say, and this was mentioned before, I'm grateful to uh, President Marcos and his team's work to promote a free, secure, and open Indo-Pacific. We're at an inflection point. The President and I were just talking about this. The Indo-Pacific is a critical part of the world, some of the most dynamic and fastest growing economies in the world, 40% of the world's GDP, and yet it's a challenging neighborhood. You live in a tough zip code for uh, openness and freedom. All the more reason that we support you and that we strengthen the U.S.-Philippines relationship. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to be at uh, the, the historic trilateral meeting between President Biden, President Marcos, and Prime Minister Kashida. They came together for the first ever U.S.-Philippines-Japan uh, trilateral summit. And it was, uh, I think the President would agree, and my counterpart, uh, Secretary Pascal, would agree, it was a very successful meeting because we all, President Biden was crystal clear. We support the Philippines, we support Japan, we are gonna be good on our commitments to security and safety in that region, and we look forward to further engaging in the economies of the region, strengthening our supply chains, strengthening our critical minerals partnership, strengthening our relationships as it relates to semiconductors and training uh, and uh, a resilient uh, uh, supply chain. The more we work together, the stronger we are and the less vulnerable we are, all of us, to economic coercion of another party. So 
To that end, I'm very much looking forward to the investor conference in June of the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. It'll be an opportunity for the Philippines to show off all your great projects and for me to help you get investment in those projects, which I'm ready to do. Uh, and of course, as was said, we're absolutely thrilled that President Marcos agreed for the Philippines to co-host the Indo-Pacific Business Forum in Manila in May. That's going to be a very significant event. Uh, in fact, it, that forum will be one of the U.S. government's premier public-private events to promote uh, trade and investment between the U.S. and our Indo-Pacific partners. So the winds at our back. The wind is at our back. Our intentions and our interests are aligned, and now it's time to execute. It's follow-up and execution. And on behalf of the United States, I can tell you we will absolutely do our part. And I have no doubt that under your leadership, Mr. President, the Philippines will do more than your part. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being a fantastic host, uh, Mabuhai. And with that, I will turn it over to Ambassador Ramualdez, or as we know him, Babe. Thank you. Secretary Raimundo, that's very nice of you. Thank you for calling me babe. <laughs> well, friends, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of friends here, and it's nice to see our friends. Former ambassadors are all here, Ambassador Kenny, uh, Sung Kim, and of course, Tom. Thank you for being here. The President's very glad to see you, of course. Uh, begging your indulgence, Mr. President, before I turn over the microphone to you, allow me first to express my sincere appreciation to Ambassador John Negroponte and Mr. Jaime Sobel de Ayala, the co-chairs of the U.S. Philippine Society, for graciously hosting and organizing this dinner, which is a fitting cap to the successful and historic visit of the President and his delegation over the past two days. Again, let me acknowledge and thank the presence of Secretary of Commerce, Gina Raimundo, who led a very successful presidential investment and trade mission to the Philippines last month. And of course, our dear friend, the Secretary of the Navy, Carlos del Toro. Gracias. Introducing our president has always been very special for me and a great honor for me, and I know he won't believe me, but this is the fourth time I'm going to be doing this because he has been here four times, and I am extremely ecstatic and lucky to have a president who comes and visits your uh, post four times. So thank you very much, Mr. President, for giving me this opportunity to introduce you again. And most of us in this room are already closely following the developments in the bilateral relations between the Philippines and the United States. We'll see the remarkable progress that has been made since the President's inauguration almost two years ago. Our President has definitely played a crucial role, if not the main role, in elevating our relations through his engagements with President Biden and senior government officials. American business leaders and representatives of the civil society including nonprofit organizations such as the U.S. Philippine Society, is an example. And as ambassador, I was always privileged to welcome President Marcos and accompany him in his delegation on four important visits to the United States in the less than two years ago. In New York, San Francisco, and now for the second time here in Washington, D.C., for this historic trilateral summit between the leaders of the United States, Philippines, and Japan. It is therefore, once again, my great honor and privilege to introduce His Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcos, Jr., President of the Republic of the Philippines. Well, uh, thanks, uh, first of all, uh, to Babe uh, for your uh, very kind introduction. Uh, I said it earlier today, uh, is proof of how good a diplomat Babe Romaldes is. 
uh, that he said how happy uh, he was to be, uh, to, for us to be visiting. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I suspect the truth of the matter is uh, he can't wait to see the back of us now <laughs> and, 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 and to watch that, watch that plane fly away. Uh, but uh, whatever, whatever he went through, it has certainly been worth it. Uh, so it has been a remarkable two days. I'd like to greet, of course, uh, our, uh, our friend, uh, U.S. Secretary of Commerce, uh, Gina Raimundo. Uh, who, as um, uh, the uh, other uh, pr previous speakers have mentioned, led a, a very important delegation. Uh, first, because it, uh, the nature of it was it was the first ever presidential delegation organized by President Biden and his offices, and uh, which was a, a, a uh, remarkable uh, event for us. And uh, most, even more importantly, was how much work got done. And I have to commend you, uh, Madam Secretary, because the delegation that you organized was very much on point. The people that came were in the sectors of the economy that we prioritized. And I think that's why we were able to prepare very well, because we were already having these deep discussions on those certain areas. So. And that's why I, that's how, uh, that's how, why I think, uh, as you were saying, that uh, uh, a good deal of work was done. And uh, I'm happy that uh, it was so successful. And we await the uh, uh, continuing stream, as you uh, describe it, to uh, the Philippines. Uh, the U.S. Secretary of the Navy, uh, Carlos, uh, Secretary Carlos del Toro, the uh, co-chairs of the U.S. Philippine Society, well, of course, uh, uh, the good ambassador, Ambassador John Negroponte, and now our uh, newly minted uh, co-chair, Jaime uh, Augusto Sobel. Uh, the, we have here also the uh, speakers, the Speaker of the House, uh, Martin, uh, Speaker Martin Romaldes. There are members of my cabinet that I have come with me. I'd like to make, of course, a uh, special greeting to uh, the former ambassadors to the Philippines. Uh, well, you, you need, you, we are, we are wait, awaiting your return uh, for a, a private visit. Every time an ambassador leaves us, uh, they, uh, we, we, they promise and they say, well, well, when we have time, I'd like to come back here for a holiday without work. We're still waiting. <laughs> but we but we're, but we're ready. We're ready for it. Uh, I think uh, Senator Francis Tolentino, is, uh, there you are, is also with us, and uh, certainly our partners from uh, the private sector, uh, the distinguished guests who have joined us uh, this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, first thank uh, the uh, U.S. Philippine Society, who has worked very hard over the past few weeks to organize tonight's event. The U.S. Philippine Society has been a close partner of the Philippine government, particularly through its close relationship with our embassy here in Washington, D.C., and a staunch supporter of promoting Philippine-American bilateral relations. But especially to promote economic cooperation and business collaborations, as well as people-to-people -people exchanges. I am uh, particularly pleased to see among the guests uh, here tonight a good number of Filipino and American business leaders, as well as other prominent personalities in their respective fields, as I hope the connections that are made and renewed tonight will lead to even more engagements in the future. Let me also thank our Ambassador to the United States, Ambassador Babe, for his uh, thoughtful introduction and also for the embassy's tireless efforts to prepare for this visit. I know how much work we give you, and, uh, but I can say without uh, fear of contradiction, it was all very much well worth it. Um, so for this visit, it, 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 uh, this is a follow-up to uh, the last visit that I came and to the United States, which was a bit uh, about uh, 11 plus months ago. 
and for you following the developments in our relations with the United States. This visit is not at all surprising. During Secretary Blinken's visit to Manila last month, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Rico Manalo, aptly described our relations as being on hyperdrive for quite some time. Increased business sector linkages and people-to-people -people exchanges have matched the accelerated pace of our engagement across all levels of government and of society. From defense and security, to trade and investment, and further still to food security, energy security, our transition to clean and renewable energy, combating climate change, digital transformation, infrastructure development, humanitarian assistance and disaster relief, and that is not the complete list. And this, is, this just demonstrates the nature of the relationship with, uh, between our two countries. I was once uh, asked uh, how, what, how I would describe uh, the relationship between the U.S. and the Philippines. And for some reason, the word that came into my head was it's dense. It is, we are engaged at every facet of human contact, uh, at every, in every way, as uh, family even, as uh, friends, as workmates, as uh, allies. Uh, it, 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 I don't think that there is a part of uh, 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 the uh, experience of a sovereign nation but, uh, that is not touched by the relationship between our two countries. And so these are the issues that we have of mutual concern to promote the well-being of our peoples, to further deepen the ties between our two countries. When we take a look at the remarkable progress we have made in our defense and security cooperation, from the largest iteration of the Balikatan exercises uh, that are and that are about to start right now. The Balikatan, for those who have not heard of them, are the joint exercises between the Philippines and the United States. And, uh, this, uh, and we do this annually. And <clears throat> it is part of the Mutual Defense Treaty. And this, uh, the Balikatan, which we are undertaking presently, there are some pre-events. Uh, the, the, the formal start is not yet, is, is in a couple of days. But it is going to be the largest, most extensive, and will cover more uh, than the more areas, um, especially in terms of interoperability, than ever was before. To, now we have also established the bilateral defense guidelines, and of course the expansion of the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, or EDCA, from the original five sites to now nine sites. It would be quite easy to see that we are in a good place as far as, far, as far as our alliance is concerned. And for me, this means that our alliance matters. It matters because our increased and intensified defense and security engagement with the United States means that we are significantly contributing to our country's ability to defend our security and address the threats in at least, at least three ways through the U.S. assistance to and support for our armed forces modernization program. Second, through frequent joint exercises, training resulting in enhanced interoperability and honing the skills of our two militaries. And third, through increased deterrence by highlighting the strength of that alliance. We cannot rest our laurels. We have done well. We have come a long way. We, I think that we have a responded uh, in a proper and measured way to uh, the challenges that have been, that have been put before us. Uh, but uh, we, we cannot uh, sit back and uh, say that the uh, mission accomplished quite yet. Uh, the nature, the intensity, and the potential disastrous consequences of the security threats facing us today necessitate that we work harder and continuously improve. I am reassured, though, by the groundwork laid by our officials for the future direction of our alliance, including the development of the Security Sector Assistance Roadmap, as well as the signing of the General Security of Military Information Agreement, both of which, I'm told, are very close to
con conclusion. I am further uh, reassured by the, the commitments made to me by President Biden and his officials that the US, the United States, will stand by the Mutual Defense Treaty, which has been described from the president down as ironclad. Another key pillar Another key pillar in our relationship is, of course, economic cooperation. I have said on several occasions, uh, including here in Washington, D.C., that economic security is national security. For the Philippines, a critical component of economic security is nurturing and growing our economic partnerships with the global community. Economic cooperation with the United States is, of course, a priority. It is paramount to the Philippines. I have uh, the good fortune to undertake this visit on the heels of a highly successful presidential trade and investment mission to the Philippines by Commerce Secretary Gina Raimundo last month. Secretary Raimundo, as uh, she has described, uh, has headed a delegation of 22 prominent American businesses and nonprofit organizations in ICT, infrastructure, energy, logistics, financial services sectors. According to the Department of Commerce, the U.S. Department of Commerce, the mission has generated over one billion U.S. dollars in American investments and concrete projects in the Philippines, creating educational and career opportunities for an estimated 30 million Filipinos. The PTIM was the first high-level trade and investment mission from the United States during my administration and I am confident that it will not be the last. As I mentioned to President Biden yesterday, there are still a lot of opportunities to enhance our trade and our investment relations. In particular, the Philippines is actively seeking American partnership in critical minerals, where we aim to move up from the upstream to the midstream in battery production, even as we ensure the sustainability of resource extraction and secure the supply chain for these critical minerals. Other areas in our priority list that we believe will bring great opportunities for economic cooperation with the U.S. are clean energy, particularly nuclear energy, especially as we look to provide affordable and reliable energy sources for the entire country to power our industries, the digital economy, semiconductors, and critical infrastructure. Regarding infrastructure, we are excited about, the particip about participating in the Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment to help attract high-quality investments to the country. These are, and there are, of course, other areas whose potential we are also looking into. But let me just highlight that in our conversation with both the U.S. government and the business community, we have showcased ongoing and future economic reforms that we intend to implement in the country to create a welcoming and attractive environment for greater investment from our international partners, and that includes, of course, the United States. Of course, the headliner of this visit is the trilateral summit between the Philippines, Japan, and the United States, which I attended yesterday with President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Kishida. As I told my American and Japanese counterparts yesterday, the summit is a testament not only to the strength of our respective bilateral relationships, but also to our firm commitment to expanding these relationships into new directions and creating new synergies as we address critical challenges and work toward uplifting the lives of our peoples. We agreed on a joint vision, mission, vision statement our meeting yes, on our meeting yesterday as a roadmap for the future. The trilateral cooperation, the statement covers diverse areas, from greater maritime domain awareness and Coast Guard cooperation to sustainable critical infrastructure, semiconductor supply, chain supply chain resilience, digital transformation, energy security, harnessing renewable and clean energy. Indeed, our trilateral defense and security cooperation builds upon our respective bilateral defense and security ties. The Philippines and Japan have close allies of the United States, and in recent years, 
there has been remarkable progress in Philippines-Japan defense and security relations. Once we conclude the reciprocal access agreement with Japan, similar to our visiting forces agreement with the United States, we will witness even greater engagement amongst our three armed forces. Nowhere is progress in this area more important than in the maritime domain. It is no secret that Japan and the Philippines are involved in maritime and territorial disputes, not with each other, but with other parties. While the United States is not a direct party to these disputes, both its treaty obligations to come into it to the aid of the Philippines and Japan in case of an armed attack by a third party as well as its commitment to uphold freedom of navigation and a rules-based order in the seas means that the U.S. has vital interest in East and South China Seas. It is therefore partic of particular importance for our three countries to work closely together on maritime-related issues, including the broader areas of maritime safety and security, maritime domain awareness, maritime environmental protection, and other issues. As these are part and parcel not only of our respective national security interests, but also because co cooperation in this area contributes significantly to regional peace and stability. However, peace and stability require another lifeblood to endure. I cannot overemphasize the importance of building a secure, inclusive, and interconnected economy for our nations and the region to provide the prosperity and security of our peoples. Through deeper cooperation, we bring concrete investments and projects to the Philippines today, not tomorrow, to help us achieve our goals. We are working with the U.S., with Japan, to establish the Luzon Corridor under the Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment to support high-quality investments in the country and to ensure inclusive and resilient progress. This includes enhancing the transportation of goods and services in strategic hubs, developing food security and agribusiness, securing semiconductor and critical mineral supply chains, clean energy. It is a monumental project and we aim for nothing less than transformative and sustainable. As we advance deeper into the digital era, we will ensure our connectivity infrastructure and workforce are ready for a robust digital economy. Together with the U.S. and Japan, we are building a digital landscape that is secure, reliable, and accessible. These cyber bridges we are building will not only connect islands within our archipelago, but will connect the entire country to the global digital market. Lessons from the pandemic and recent geopolitical developments compel us to secure global supply chains, especially in the semiconductor industry, where the Philippines is ready to participate and to absorb the additional capacity necessary to future-proof the semiconductor value chain. Working with our allies, especially Japan and the United States, is necessary to protect our interests. In support of this goal, we are exploring trilateral cooperation to build a resilient semiconductor industry, including opportunities to upskill the Philippine labor force. The key to achieving progress is also energy security. As we transition to clean energy as a responsible step to combat the effects of climate change, the Philippines will need ambitious programs, nuclear energy in our energy mix. With the help of partners such as U.S. and Japan, we are moving closer towards our nuclear energy ambition. Our goal is to provide reliable, affordable, secure energy for the entire country to sustain the inevitable growth that is now within our grasp. As I return to the Philippines tomorrow, I will bring the good news to our people that our alliance with the United States has become stronger, bolstered by our economic engagements close people-to-people -people ties, and reinforced by our growing friendship and cooperation with like-minded partners in the Indo-Pacific region like Japan. More importantly, I bring home the commitment from our three countries to sustain the momentum of this increasingly close partnership in the years to come, all for the benefit of our people and for the security of our region. Thank you and good evening.